Okay, time for monthly mailbox. G'day guys and welcome back to Layla Central. My name's Clinton, your average modeler, and this is another segment called Monthly Mailbox. Okay, now as part of Monthly Mailbox, um, what I do is I open my products on what I've actually purchased for the month and uh, you know share the unboxing with you guys. And as one of my subscribers put it, it's like Christmas every month. Um, but uh, you know, I love unboxings, I like watching other people unbox things. Um, so you know, if you like what I'm actually doing here, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to comment if you want to. I do value and read all your comments. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. Now, one of the items uh, from Monthly Mailbox I've already unboxed, um, which is essentially this book here. Um, so I do apologise I didn't unbox that with you guys, but what I'll do is I'll share it with you now. Now, this is a great uh, piece of material that I've been after, and it's essentially a book on the on the Somerset and Dorset Railway. Now, this book is a wealth of information, which I'll open up and share some of the pages with you. Okay, so with essentially this book itself, it's all about the Somerset and Dorset Railway. So, you know, we've got plenty of good reading and information on the actual Somerset Dorset. We've also got, you know, like key symbols on the actual uh, railway lines, etc. And then it goes into, you know, history, like the actual line, um, all the different junctions, all the stations, bit of history. You know, you've even got your, uh, your gradients to indicate, you know, what sort of things you're dealing with. And then there's also prototypical... Uh, photographs like this one here is of Bath Station. Um, and then, of course, you know, you've got information such as track diagrams of these things. So there's a lot of wealth of great information uh, in this uh, book. And as you can see there, you know, like there's the uh, the good shed along with the engine sheds. Um, again, more prototypical photos. It is a real great book. Um, you know, explains a lot of history, you know, when the line opened and closed in these stations, um, and as well as, you know, any information in history. Um, which uh, it's been quite good. Now, I've been a big fan of the Somerset and Dorset Railway. I um, almost actually uh, did my new layout on this. Um, so, you know, it was in the uh, runnings to actually get it. And, um, you know, truth be told, I'd, I'd love to do it still. But, um, yeah, so anyway, you know, a wonderful bit of reading material, plenty of information, um, you know, diagrams of stations and all manner of stuff, really. And, um, you know, it's quite a thick book, really, with all the information that's in it. So, um, you know, very useful very uh, beneficial and um, you know I'm going to read this probably over 50 times and still uh, read it e again even more so um, yeah as you can imagine that'll be uh, that's going to be used very heavily with uh, lots of reading so wonderful book so if you're ever interested in uh, looking at track diagrams and uh, you know a bit of history this uh, this book here um, is yeah you know I could I recommend it very much if you're in that sort of uh, thing Okay, now out of uh, my other boxes here, um, this one here is my largest one. Now this is an order from Hattons, and um, you know, very good with the service Hattons. I uh, can't fault them enough. Um, so what I've actually purchased, yeah, fantastic, is some of their coal loads. So here I've got uh, some of the medium, um, so not a bad uh, sort of scale, I like that. But I also did purchase uh, the fine as well, so I plan to mix the two different grades together. Um, I'll use them to ballast my tent, oh, not ballast, I'll use them to put uh, the coal in my tenders of my locomotives. I'll plan to also put them in my um, coal wagons, so uh, they're going to get used quite heavily. So a bit of a boring <laughs> purchase, that one, but um, look out in the future, I'll do a video on um, how I apply those loads to uh, my, um, to those items. Now, the other item I've got is... Uh, this small box right here. So what I'll do is I'll just adjust the camera a little bit and I'll show you what's inside here. So here we've got essentially a sugar cube speaker from um, Lock Sound or ESU, which is interesting. Gotten a sound chip preloaded with sounds, but uh, diesel class 03, and you may be able to guess what the rest of it is. Yes, indeed, I've purchased a Buckman class 03 shunter. Desperate need for it. For those that have uh, been watching my cement plant progress, uh, one of the things I've lacked is a shunter or you know, basically anything to roll in that area, including rolling stock. So, 
Here's my uh, shunter. You know, it's a uh, it is the weathered version by Buckman, um, six pin DCC. So using essentially that plus my sound chip, which comes with all the preloaded sounds. Now the speaker on this I was a bit unsure as to whether I'd be able to fit it inside this diesel. So what I ended up doing was purchasing a sugar cube speaker to go with it as well as a just in case. So in the future I will be fitting a uh, the chip to this and see if I can get it in there. Um, I haven't, uh, I've, I've fitted uh, DCC ready uh, sound chips before and, you know, straight in, but this one's going to be a bit difficult because I'm very tight for space. So, um, you know, I don't like to do things easy. I'm just going to go in balls deep and uh, <laughs> see if I can fit her in here. Uh, but anyway, let's get this out of the box and take a closer look. So she's a beautiful looking uh, little shunter, really, in uh, late BR livery, of course. Uh, now, I went with the factory finished uh, weathered, uh, finish on this pillar because um, you know hey if I can get them to come factory weathered well, some of them do look quite good and I think uh, this one here will look extremely good um, already manufactured weathered so let's get this out and take a bit of a look and what I'll do is I'll lower the camera so you guys can see it a bit more better as well all right give me a second I'll just lower these feet Come on, Clinton, you can get your, get your stuff together. There we go. I should have come prepared. All right, there we go, guys. So so there she is there. There's my uh, Class OH shunter. Um, looks very nice. Factory weathered, nice bit of detail. You know, we've got uh, separately fitted um, rails here, which is quite nice. Um, plenty of rivet and vent detail. Um, of course, in the front there, as you can see, she's a bit uh, dirty and grubby, which is quite good. So, you know, I'm actually quite happy with that factory finish already, um, which isn't too bad. The uh, the buffers are sprung, which is very nice as well. And uh, we do have a driver in there as well, as you can see right there. So, no, she's, um, that'll be a nice looking uh, shunter to have shunting her in in the cement plant, I reckon. And, um... It looks quite nice. I might add some a uh, little bit of extra weathering to this. Not much, but just a little bit. Um, so, you know, we've got f uh, nicely fitted rails along here. Plenty of nice vent detail. Um, all bits and uh, pieces here. Um, you know, even we've got some separately fitted rails here around the steps. Um, so, I mean, like I've mentioned before, monthly mailbox doesn't do uh, in-depth review. So, um, you know, there are plenty of other channels that do wonderful, excellent, in-depth uh, reviews on locomotives. Um, and uh, But, yes, yeah, so I'll share that with you guys. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully I can fit a DCC decoder to this. Um, so normally what I would do is I'd get this out, I'd put it on my layout straight away and have it running, showing you guys how it is. But uh, obviously at the moment, uh, my layout is DCC, and I haven't fitted the chip to this. So uh, you're just going to have to bear with me, I reckon, on that. Okay, so just uh, popping open essentially the lock sound uh, sound decoder that I've actually purchased. Now, taking a look at, you know, there's the stock standard bit of equipment. So there's our chip right here. There's the speaker, and man, it's big. Um, so I'm am glad I bought the Sugar Cube uh, speaker. So to put it in perspective, I've taken obviously the uh, locomotive and the body off. She just, uh, whoops, wrong way around. It's just essentially sits in there now don't know if i can get this on camera but if you have a look at the front nose area there where essentially where it slides up you can see a small bit of a, a gap right about in here um i'm trying to get the light in there that's probably a bit more better to show it so i do have a little bit of space um you know looking back over here where the cab essentially is i might have to uh, attack some of that as well to fit the actual speaker but um the way things are looking you know looking at this space versus the size of that, like the speaker, that is massive, like just to put it in perspective, you know, quite big. So it looks like I'm going to have to go the sugar cube uh, option anyway. But uh, what I'll do is I'll plug this chip into the, um, to my unit and uh, we'll see how she actually sounds to begin with, I reckon. Okay, here we are just on the layout. So I've fitted the chip to it for the moment just to make sure it actually sounds. Um, so let's power her up and uh, let's see if, uh, if we sound anything.
I see if I can actually get this um, model to actually uh, move forward a little bit. We'll see how she goes. Oh, she's a bit dirty on the track there, I think. Lost my sound too. Oh, here we go. No, I think I need to give her a clean anyway, guys. But um, yeah, you know, she's sounding okay. But I'm um, going to have to uh, fit the chip properly, see how we can um, get the, um, yeah, get it all fitted, get it programmed, and see how we go. Oh. Might have to invest also in perhaps a. Uh, Maybe a stay alive capacitor, I think. Uh, we'll wait and see anyway. Okay, so I fitted the uh, decoder to this uh, locomotive now, and as well as the speaker. Now, as you can see here, I've put my speaker right in the back. Now, this is the stock standard speaker with the lock sand decoder, so I haven't actually used the sugar cube. Uh, I was using the sugar cube or potentially going to use it in case I did need to downsize it. I've also got uh, my wiring in here as well, as you can see. So as you look around on this side here, there you'll see all my wiring sitting right there. So I do plan to take all this off and tidy her up and see how it goes. Now, I have um, played with the CVs an awful lot. I've tried to uh, get this unit to run as slow as possible. Um, and truth be told, um, you know, I, I will have to say I'm not exactly impressed uh, with this decoder. I, I mean, obviously it gives it its sound um, and it sounds not too bad. But at slow speed, um, now I've played with the CVs so much just to see if I can get this thing to go at a nice crawl. Now, um, obviously it is screaming for a stay alive capacitor to be fitted in, which I will plan to put in. Um, but it's slow speed, no matter what I've adjusted with the CVs, I can't get it to go super slow. Now, I know it is the decoder uh, because I've put in a lens uh, six pin decoder in this out of one of my other locomotives and it runs like a dream. Um, it, the motor is super quiet and she crawls very slow. Um, whereas going with this lamp, with this uh, lock sand decoder that I've got, now this is a version 4, the motor is noisy um, and the slow speed control I'm just not impressed with. Um, so it's one of these things, this wasn't a cheap decoder and setup that I got. Um, you know, I really want the sound, but at the same time, now, the performance on it is uh, something that I'm a little bit head scratching over. Um, so I'll filter through a lot of the uh, the CVs, um, but in the meantime, I'll fire her up and uh, you can have a listen and I'll show you the slow speed of it as well. So as you can see there, guys, you know, the um, the locomotive tends to move a bit, bit quick, very quickly. Now, that's speed step six when it starts to take off. If I put it on number five, four, and everything else, it doesn't want to crawl. Um, so I'm struggling. You know, as soon as it hits uh, speed step six, then it wants to take off. Like, I'll show you right now. So that's on number three at the moment, and that's not doing anything. But as soon as I increase it by one, so that's number four, it moves a little bit, then, you know, it really, really struggles. I'll go to number five, 
and then it picks up a bit too quickly as you can see so I want to fiddle with the um, with obviously the CVs a lot more and see how we go um, but it's uh, you know I can't get it to go much slower uh, no matter what I've adjusted so um, I'll still continue to fiddle now I've backed that down to five and it will slowly move but then come to a stop so that's the momentum um, so yeah so we'll wait and see I need to fiddle with, with a, a heck of a lot more and see how we go um, but um, you know she's going to serve the job very well I think um, now what I'll do is I'll turn the sound off and you can have a listen to the motor as well which you might be able to hear that um, so you know she's got a bit of a grindy noise and like I mentioned, as soon as I put a lens six pin decoder in it, she runs as sweet as a nut. Um, obviously, though, it is going from a, uh, a, a capacitor just to give it a bit more uh, you know, safe running, essentially, across any turnouts, etc. Um, so that will definitely have to happen. But, um, but look, you know what? I'm very happy with the locomotive itself. Um, she is a very nice little shunter. It's going to look very well uh, in amongst the cement plant shunting things around. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. That's this month's episode of uh, Monthly Mailbox. Um, thanks for those that have joined us or stuck through to the end. And, uh, and of course, don't uh, forget to comment down below. I do read and respond to your comments. And of course, uh, don't forget to, get, forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks, guys. Take care, and we will catch up again soon. Bye for now. Okay, I think we finally have gotten there after just uh, finishing recording my video. I've adjusted more CVs using my NCE power cab and I've been able to adjust it to a level that I'm a bit more happier with. So what I'll do is I won't talk. I uh, won't put the sand on and that way you can hear the motor but also see the slow speed running that I've gotten for it. And um, it definitely needs a stay alive capacitor. But anyway, we'll fire up and uh, show you how it goes. Now that's the slowest I can get it to run at this stage. So um, I'll keep filling with the CVs anyway and uh, see how we go. But for now, I'm going to have a good play with her. <laughs> 